Welcome to the Housework Workshop Vlog, episode 001, starting right now. And I know you're saying to yourself, Brian, I don't watch vlogs. That's like something people do who are not manly, greasy, and working on stuff. I just want to watch you do your thing in your shop and build funny stuff with grinders and knives and metal and all that manly good stuff. Well, I'm going to label them really big with a big thumbnail that says vlog. So you'll never get confused on whether or not you're going to be watching a vlog or you're going to be watching me build something. One of the things I've been thinking about doing is reading my favorite comment of the week and also answering some questions from you guys that are in the comment section down below. Also, we'll be talking about upcoming builds, some projects that I've got on the horizon that I want to work on, and I'd like to bounce some of those ideas off of you guys. All right, let's get started. One of the biggest projects I had going on the last couple of weeks is this brand new grind room. My son Dexter and I built it out of two by two tube steel. I started working with this when I started building and designing industrial grinders. I figured, you know what? I think this would be cheaper than wood, and I did the price comparison, and it actually was. Plus, it gives me a whole host of options as far as creating things on the inside of the space, like a material rack and a bunch of other things that you could affix to the structure itself. And I really liked having those options. Plus, it looks really cool. It's industrial. It's a nice look and feel to it. I love these little magnets, by the way. These guys are great. I tend to be more of a grinder than a welder, but they'll hold. So as far as upcoming builds go, I have really one project that I want to focus on in the upcoming weeks, and that's a new welding cart. Right now, I'm using this $35 Harbor Freight Special. I was staring at it the other day, and while I was moving it around, I realized I have probably about $1,200 worth of welding equipment sitting on a $35 cart. And saying that this thing is rickety is the understatement of the year. So yeah, it's time for an upgrade. I saw this old Tony put one together. Uh, I don't really need all the bells and whistles. I don't need drawers. I really just want a solid cart with a bunch of hooks and really nice caster wheels. So if you've seen something out there that you think is a good design, send me a link. I need some ideas on this. I also wanted to discuss something that was a little bit embarrassing. Last week, I released a video on Wednesday morning about sealing your air compressor pipes. I referenced another YouTuber in this video. And what I didn't realize, because I'm not really good at following up on current events, that that YouTuber that I referenced actually came out as a sort of ethnic cleanser supporter of people who are racist. I don't know. I, I went down a little bit of a wormhole reading about him. It made me really super disappointed in this person because I've gotten a lot of good tips from them and I'm not going to reference who it is. I'm not going to say who it is. Some of his videos have been removed due to um, content policy restrictions because they're that bad. Why I mention this is because I had to remove the video from YouTube, edit out the portion where I reference him, and then uh, put it back up online. And what happened was YouTube basically just didn't feed it out to you guys as subscribers. So. Uh, if you're interested in that, I'll put a card right up here. You can check that video out and uh, watch that video if you want. But uh, next time I reference somebody in a YouTube video, I am going to do massive amounts of vetting before I say anything about somebody. It's just, um, just the way the world is, I guess.
Now it's time for my favorite comment of the week. It comes from my buddy Pascal. He writes, man, after three years of struggling with the tracking of my belt grinder, I finally found the courage to tear it down and make the adjustments shown in your video. Now that the tracking is pretty on point, with the tracking wheel in level before I had to crank it up like 10 degrees to the left. This is such an improvement. Thank you so much for sharing, buddy. This is what YouTube is all about. Greetings from Germany. I responded to that comment and I asked Pascal if he would send me an email and show me his setup, in which he did. And uh, it's actually really cool to check out everybody's grinding setups, their work setups, whatever it might be. I'm, I'm a super workspace nerd like that. I love that kind of stuff. So he responded and wrote me a really awesome email and sent me some photos of his setup. He says, I'm Pascal from Munster, Germany. I'm 27 year old mechanic and hobbyist knife maker and blacksmith. Attached to this email are pictures of my current main grinder. It's a 50 millimeter by 2000 millimeter belt grinder for you Imperial folks. Thanks for doing the conversion, Pascal. Appreciate that. It's a Miele or Mili 94 made by a Croatian company called Batkovic. This thing is really sturdy, but not so precise. But it was like a thousand euro, I think. Well, let's see, what are they? What's the money in Deutschmarks? I don't know what you guys spend in Germany. I'm not sure. And I couldn't find any other grinder for that price. It comes with a flat platen, a nine inch grinding wheel and three smaller wheels. Unfortunately, you have to buy belts with smaller lengths to use the small wheel attachment. I didn't notice that before buying, but maybe converting the grinder that you can use only one sort of belt is my next project. That would be pretty key, actually. I wonder if there's a way to shorten the, the arm on that small wheel attachment to make it. No, I guess you need longer. You would need a longer arm, right? So before I followed your advice in the video, the driving wheel was 20 millimeters shifted to the left compared to the upper wheel of the flat platen. So I drilled and filled slots in the base plate to get an extra space for moving the motor. The tracking wheel was about 10 millimeters shifted to the left and I used the opportunity to make a whole new mounting plate for the tracking mechanism. Now the plate has a slot too so you can shift it in and out and get access for adjusting X and Y axis, just like in your footage. And I think this was really the crucial change for the tracking. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the tracking is pretty good with the tracking wheel and level. The only thing that is not quite right is that it takes a little more force for the tracking wheel to create belt overhang on the left side other than the right side. I think that is connected to the fact that you always tension your belt by steering to the left and always loosen by steering to the right. Do you get the same problem or do you have a solution for this tiny issue? Uh, you're absolutely right on with that, Pascal. If you dial that thread towards you, you're lifting that wheel and that belt is resting on the outer portion of that wheel. So yeah, you're creating more tension. So you're really gonna need more force to make the tracking move in that direction. It's totally normal. It's how my setup is and probably everyone else's. So don't worry so much about that. Pascal, thank you so much for sending that email and sending me those photos. If you would like to participate in a viewer submission, send me an email, brian at housework.us. I'd love to see your setup and feature it right here on my vlog. If you got something out of today's video, remember to hit that thumbs up. It means a lot and it helps me out a lot. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. If you see anything in my workshop or my studio that you'd like to know more about, there are links down in the description that will take you to my Amazon store. Everything in there is categorized down from my personal safety equipment to my tools, even my mill, my air compressor, everything's in there. And if you click through to those links and you buy something, I get a small commission and that's a free way to support my channel. Now, if you want to take your support to the next level, I do have a Patreon page now. For as little as $1 a month, you can support everything I have going on right here in my workshop. If you don't want to use Patreon, you can use the buy me a coffee link and literally buy me a coffee. It's a great way to do a one-off donation to my channel. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much. As always, guys, this has been a blast producing this vlog. I'm so glad I did it. I hope you enjoyed it too. My name is Brian House, and this has been Housework. <laughs>